All right, welcome to the winter wonderland. Figured I'd do a quick update on the old barn build. Now I know it looks a little different than the end of my last video because I'm not that great with cameras and I screwed up a bunch of my footage. But basically what's changed is we got the top kind of closed in and I got some house wrap on it. Uh, but the house wrap, I just did enough to make sure I would close off the window opening so snow didn't blow in here all summer. All right, so let's take a look at her. Figured I'd talk about a few things I would change too if I could go back to before I started building and was to just start this thing. There's a few things I wish I would have known, you know, and maybe some of the stuff is obvious to a lot of people, but it wasn't to me and I'm not that experienced of a builder. So if you're watching this, maybe that stuff helps you. But uh, for me, like the first mistake that's pretty simple and kind of embarrassed. All right, I wanted a 30 by 30 footprint for this thing. And that's what I got my posts at. But I didn't take into account that like on that side, you know, you're gonna have these two by fours on the outside to nail the boards to for the siding. So now my building is 30 foot three inches from end to end and then side to side because of those boards on the side. Watch, I'm milling my own lumber to put on for siding, so it's not a big deal. But if you're using like uh, that pro rib siding that Menard sells, it would be kind of an issue, you know? And in fact, it might be kind of an issue for me because along the bottom here, along the whole building, now like this side is gonna be open to the outside. There won't be a wall on that but there'll be a wall on this inner one, right? But back to what I was going for, on the very bottom, we're gonna buy two foot sections of black pro rib metal from Menards. And we're gonna go along the bottom, you know, just so the wood isn't so close to the ground for moisture reasons. And I think it'll look good. But so now that my building is bigger than 30 feet, I'm probably going to have to cut and slice some pieces up and it's it's just not ideal. <laughs> just not ideal. All right. Um other things. All right, height wise. All right, I built this thing it's like 10 feet to the bottom of that floor. All right. Now that's way too tall. <laughs> My tractor could have fit in it in an 8 under 8 foot ceiling. But you know, as you're talking and you're designing, you think Everyone tells you, oh, build it bigger. What if you get a bigger tractor, this and that. But at the end of the day, I think I'd have been way better dropping the ceiling down, even the nine feet, take another foot off of there, you know, because that adds stability and everything else to the build. And it's, you know, I just didn't need the 10 feet. Not that this building isn't stable. I mean, once I put in these cross braces that kind of in the V shape, that, that really, I mean, you can go up there and you can do a little jig and the building doesn't move. Where before I had them in there, it moved quite a bit. All right, and another side effect of the building being so tall, like say you come into this overhang. Now this overhang will be sealed up. There'll be a wall here. I'm gonna end up putting a door in, but anyhow, what I was getting at is that ceiling now, that's like 13 feet up to that ceiling. We got all this kind of wasted space. So we're gonna build like a loft up in here just for storage. You know, I feel bad that we're gonna have that much wasted space. So, all right, there's that. All right, now what else can we go on about? Um, Let's go upstairs. Show you a few of the things up there I would change. All right, and now also, like you got these sides, just for lighting issue, we're gonna buy some of them clear. They're like the pro rib type panels, but they're plastic that like Menard sells for siding. And just to get natural lighting in so we don't, so we're not tripping and falling all over ourselves. All right, now up here, there's a size issue too. Now, when we were building this, or drawing it up on paper anyhow, I had planned for seven foot sidewalls. And that seemed reasonable. But as we were doing it, I was, we were talking and we're like, man, 
maybe we go eight foot because we got two foot overhangs and we don't want to be looking at an overhang when we're sitting there looking out the window you know you don't want it blocking your view so we went up to eight foot and it was really just unneeded we shouldn't have we shouldn't have went up to eight foot we should have kept it seven foot i mean the ceiling's so tall now but it is what it is it's what's done is done all right now you may notice a lot of gaps here in between the boards now i don't consider it a mistake i expected those gaps because those boards were a tree probably the day before i nailed them up <laughs> so they were wet and heavy when i nailed them up and when i nailed them up i pried them down tight on each other knowing that they were gonna shrink let's see if i get it on video see the air gap there um it's maybe an eighth of an inch between if you were to average it i would bet it's an eighth of an inch gap between the boards but you figure you got the underlayment and then we're gonna have like wood siding i haven't decided if it's gonna be like a pine shake or a live edge or a board and batten still up in the air i say me but i mean my wife hasn't decided <laughs> <laughs> but you're gonna have siding over that anyhow so i don't think that's a big issue and i think it will be plenty dried out by the time we get to do the siding in like spring or early summer i hope spring or early summer all right um another thing the boards on the end you know you see how them are going straight across on the peak all right me i'm not a very experienced builder i ain't gonna lie so I started doing that. I had to scab a bunch of two by four scraps in there. So I had something to nail to to get them boards up. And then my wife says, why don't you cut them on an angle and put the boards up? So we did that and I didn't have to scab anything in there and it worked out great. So yeah, if you're doing, doing the peaks or whatever you'd call that area, you know, it works great to do it at an angle. And it's really not complicated because it's the same angle as your roof, you know? All right, other things I didn't really expect. Um, I guess like the, ooh, what do you call them, collar ties? I originally hadn't planned on, on putting them there. But after we put this roof together, I, it just looked like it needed something. It needed something. Um, with these, for the distance these rafters span, and the rafters we got, it should stand up to a 70 pound square foot snow load. So, so far this winter, we've had a fair, good fair amount of snow and it's holding up, so that's good. I don't wanna jinx it. Um, anything else I would change? This floor, we went with half inch plywood for this floor. Now we did that because our intention was to go over it with boards we cut and do like a one inch thick wood floor, you know, with, with like a cool pattern on it. So looking back on it, cause it's half inch, it's fairly flimsy. You know, you walk on it, it moves, you know, but it is what it is and it's here now. If I could go back on it, I would probably just buy the three quarter inch plywood and use that as a flooring and just be done with it then we'd probably just do like an underlayment and put like a vinyl floor whatever clipped together locked together floor on it all right um other things worth mentioning uh one thing that uh wasn't really in the videos before we built this thing the ground here sloped down see if i can get it on the video um, it's hard to tell, but the ground here is actually raised up almost four feet total from its natural elevation. Now we weren't too worried about it because all of our foundation where we put the posts on is deeper than what we added for dirt. So basically all the dirt that's around here is clay we brought in to uh and it's clay because that's the kind of soil we have i'm digging ditches for drainage around my fields 
and we'd throw that clay into the back of a little one ton dump truck and haul it over here and with it wet i mean it's an old truck we could only fit maybe five buckets in the back and from my little coyote ck3510 tractor in fact here's the backhoe <laughs> all winterized but uh you could fit like five buckets from the tractor in the back and it literally took us over two weeks to raise this ground up and make it kind of level and basically the process for that is we'd dump it my wife would drive it up here dump it i'd come up with a tractor kind of spread out the pile that she dumped and then i'd put the rototiller on and i'd break the clumps of clay up and then as she was dumping the next load she would drive over it with the loaded dump truck and pack it down and then i say two weeks worth of work but it took us two months of weekends you know and then a few vacation days and it was hard work hauling all that clay and then digging all day on that little backhoe if i could do it again i'd have went and rented an excavator and maybe a little bigger of a dump truck and got a few friends and just got it done with but we toughed her out and i think that kind of led because as summer wore on and we started this thing in july you know you get to the end of the year and you get kind of burned out all of a sudden you know the day you should be working on this and you're out trout fishing or bluegill fishing or so i guess basically the whole point of me expelling all this wind in this last little section is make sure you don't burn yourself out man you know take her easy it's it's a marathon not a race man it's a marathon or marathon not a sprint so yeah i kind of burned myself out and that's why that's why we didn't get the roof done and production kind of stopped because all of a sudden fall was here and you know you got hunting and you know the lakes are turning over and the fishing gets good but uh all right that's enough about that i just wanted to give a little update she's she's holding up and i'm looking forward to getting into the videos we got a lot of interesting stuff coming up this summer hopefully we're going to get this sighted we're going to get her roofed so metal roofing on there um i'm going to try making some pine shakes and some cedar shakes because i was actually thinking or shingles whatever the proper term is I was debating on doing, making my own pine shingles and doing it on, on that, that roof over there. I don't know though, on the overhangs. It's definitely gonna be metal on the main roof. And then when we get that done, we're gonna be putting in water tanks and I'm gonna be putting a shower upstairs and a sink and then a wood stove and we'll be insulating the upstairs. And then I got this cool deer stand we're gonna build it's gonna be a little whimsical. I don't know, like a Dr. Seuss type thing where the roof curves out like that. And then the walls angle in. Cause it's gonna be like a deer stand slash uh, playhouse for grandkids. So that'll be pretty cool. So as long as uh, a guy don't burn out and a guy can keep, keep the motor going. All right, that's enough yakking though. Just enjoy your winter and Thanks for watching the video.